This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. My name's Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with us, as always, we have Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. How do? How's everybody doing? Bueno. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Bueno is good. Yep. But early. Yeah, <laughs> much more bueno than last week. Well, that's good. Yeah. Honestly, isn't that the whole point? Every day we can make it a little bit better than the day before, or the week before. Well, I'll tell you, I can't get any worse. <gasps> <laughs> oh boy, do you want to start us off? Oh sure. Yeah. So when when I left off, I had a leak. <laughs> yeah. I remember the leak. Hadn't slept much. Right. Wasn't sure what was going to happen over the weekend. Mm-hmm. But. And weekend ended up actually being not so bad, thank goodness. And on Monday, we started digging, looking for the, we had the plumber lined up, and we started looking, and we can't find it. And we get around the corner, and we keep, we're going down the sidewalk, Digging up, digging up, digging up, and we get to the first joint that we think it could be, and it's, there's no leak there. And the plumber shows up and, and says, that's not four inch, or that's not three inch pipe, that's four inch pipe. And I'm like, yeah, it is. He's like, you told me three. And I'm like, I did, didn't I? <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Well, I'm like, good thing we can't find a leak right now, because we don't even have the right size pipe. And so I was like, well, we're going to keep going. I'll let you know what I find. You know, and so we we keep going. I was I'm looking at we took lunch. And I'm looking at photos, and I'm like, okay, it looks like there could be another joint over here. And I'm like, I got the tape measure out. I'm measuring it all out. I'm like, okay, we got to pull more pavers. We pull more pavers. The guys start digging, and uh, I had I had I had to run and take care of some things. So by the time I get back, they're they're finding the glycol in the sand, but there's no water. There's no fluid anywhere. You know, we're expecting a puddle, huh. and and. So now we've gone, you know, we're we're a little bit far this way. We're five feet back this way. And like in the middle, I was like, the middle is lined up exactly where we found some uh, fluid come into a building. And I just said, well, I don't know what's under here, but I'm going to knock this foam off. And as soon as I did, the water just started flowing. Uh, I was like, all right, shut it off. And shut it off. Get in there, clean everything back up get somebody down there. I'm like, okay, turn it back on. And you could totally see the water shooting out and how it was shooting out. I'm like, I'll be back. <laughs> and I ran, ran down to the plumbing or uh, irrigation store. Cause I know they have clamps down there. And I came back up with a rubber clamp and we just, um, and they're like, where'd you get that? I'm like, I, I, they got them at pipe co and we put it around there and, and clamped it and stopped the leak for now. And so then I called Chuck from the plumbing company and I said, okay, this is what we found. And it's, it was a split. It's a split in the middle of the pipe. Oh, wow. Just 
complete <gasps> fluke. So you were expecting I mean, it to be on like an elbow or a joint or, or a something. joint or yeah. something. Yeah, that's what everyone was saying. Wow. And even then, they were saying it's almost impossible that this stuff just doesn't leak. Wow, the connectors blow apart. Because they're 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 heat they're fusion welded. It's like you, they're imagine just melting plastic into itself. Right. It it doesn't exactly like spring a hole. It blows <laughs> apart. Right. Jeez. So yeah. So then so then Chuck comes back and he's like, oh yeah, I got this. I got this. I'll have to go get some more. Nut. You say I think I actually have this pipe, and I'll go get a couple more things. And and um and I said just you know we'll we'll get it all ready and cleaned up for you. You know I figured I t- asked him how much space do you need? What do you need? How's this going to work? And he showed me, and I'm like, all right, we'll we'll have it ready for you. And the next day he he showed up and did this cool like high tech little fix, and it was done. Nice. Yeah, and then after that it was all a matter of trying to line up. I'm like, okay, how are we going to get the foam back over this? How are we going to yeah, you know, just get 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 the rest of the process. But the main line, main thing was that the leak was fixed, and that was just awesome. So then Saturday comes around, and I'm drinking my. I got my coffee ready. I'm just about to drink my coffee, and I get a text message from the company that's doing our. Oh, oh. So I I I forgot about the whole part where I got deathly ill. Oh, <laughs> what? Yes. So on Monday. When we were when we were finding this thing, I was like, "Man, I'm feeling like I'm getting a cold, just like right in the back there, like it's just a little sinusy." By Tuesday, I I I I was completely sinus like infection feeling, like oh, just geez. that run down and just you know I could breathe through my nose, but I could just tell everything was just nasty. And at one point, I like blew my nose. I'm like, oh yeah, that's not good. And I was like, so I left. I actually left work early on Tuesday, figuring I just had a sinus infection. I'm like, okay, I'll call the, I'll go to the clinic on Wednesday and get some antibiotics. I woke up so sick on Wednesday. I was bad off. Like oh, wow. it was not good. And and I actually, it was so bad that I burned one of our take home COVID tests. Yeah. Just because, and I had so much coming out of my nose too. I'm just like, okay, I have plenty of <laughs> right <laughs> of material, uh, and and it it showed up negative. I'm like, all right, and then and and so then Thursday, I just I still I was still symptomatic. I'm like, I can't, you know, the insurance company was coming out, and I'm just like, I I in I can't in good conscience go back go into work. So Friday day off, feeling better. Like it was, I actually woke up. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling better than I did yesterday. And like I said, then Saturday I got up and I felt much better. And I'm sitting there drinking some coffee. And it's the guys that do our, our, they line our water tanks with cement. They're like, yeah, we're just finishing breakfast. We're coming. We'll be there in a little while. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and they, and they had asked about if they could do a weekend. They just didn't tell me that it was going to be that weekend. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, wow. Because of course it is, <laughs> yeah. Of course, and and of course Frank is up there, and Frank knows nothing about this stuff, like oh, nothing, nada. If it was like Omar who used to work on Saturdays, there'd be no problem. So I'm like, okay, I, I'll be up there. So I get up there, we come up with a gate plan, and the reason I wanted it on the weekend was because we were gonna have to shut like a water tank down, do some work in that one, then switch to the other one, and if we had any problems with like the health club. There's hardly anyone there on on the weekends, and on Sunday, it was Super Bowl Sunday. There was going to be nobody there in the afternoon, yeah. and so we came up with a plan and everything. And and we're looking at the one tank that has to get relined, and there's a big, huge bundle of tubes that slides in there that heats it up. And he's like, "I don't know." He he didn't know that they, we even had him in there. And I'm just like, "Okay, how could you not know? All of our all of them, we have them in all of them, but I guess." with all the photos, James had taken all of them out beforehand. And so they didn't see the two bundles in there. And I'm just like, well, we don't have gaskets for these. And I was like, all right, I think we have gasket material. I can make one. So I'll go down. It looks like I got just enough gasket material. And I'm like, all right, well, if you need it out, just, you know, let me know. So Frank texts me about like one, they definitely need the the two bundle out. I'm like, all right, I'll be up there. I said, grab this, 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 and I'll be there. So we get there, and on the way, I called up Omar, 
and Omar was like, and I told him that the the tank guys were there. He's like, he's like, I'll come in. He's like, but I, you know, I'm like, no, you need a day off. He's like, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, you know, because I had I had a couple days, even though I was sick. I'm like, no, I got this. Don't worry about it. Just answer your phone if I have a question. So I I, I sent him a text message. I'm like, how heavy is this thing? I'm like, do I should I set up a, you know, a hoist or anything? Oh no, two people can can pull it out. So get the thing unbolted, pull it out. First thing, thing weighed up freaking ton like it was, <laughs> like and my back went like that oh, instantly geez. my back went and i'm just like oh you gotta be kidding me and you know, we get the thing down and like i'm hurting like i'm hurting bad and managed to i could at least stand upright so i managed to figure out how i was going to make a gasket and, and i was there till like five o'clock on on my day off i was like I can't believe this again. No. <laughs> and I don't get overtime because I'd already been sick. Right. So so I get there Sunday morning and I'm like, I'm like, Frank, I'm gonna need your help on Sunday putting this thing back in. Yeah, you know, like I I hate to ask you to come in, but he's like, no problem, I got it. So Sunday he comes in when I told him, you know, we got this time they had they had four guys with their crew, so they had guys to lift it and we got it in, lifted it up, no problem. And, I had a jack already if we needed it, but um, but Sunday I, c- I couldn't even put my own socks on. Oh, I had to have nice. I had to have Sharon oh, put one God. of my socks on, oh, and right. even that was horrible. But at least by Sunday morning, it had like kind of localized to just one side, which was really good news. That means that the overall inflammation was dropping fast. And this is the best part: on Sunday night when I got home, or Saturday night when I got home, all I wanted to do is get in the bathtub, fill the bathtub hot water, I'm soaking. Okay, I want to get some more hot water. No, I got no hot water. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. So I yank out my back, working on a, on a hot water tank. I mean, it's, this is, we're talking like a, I've... this is like a 500-gallon water tank, and I get home, and my own water heater goes out. Jeez. Oh, uh, time to go get a hotel room for the night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Seriously. Just to get so a I hot bath. Down... <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I went downstairs, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm handy enough to have yeah. an electrical water heater and i was like okay this the uh, okay i can bypass this and fiddle the, yeah all right cool i got hot water again yeah <laughs> you know, like, it, it was just it was just so great so, so sunday actually ended up being a good day and and by the time monday rolled around now it's it's uh and i i told omar i'm like you, you should take monday off you need a three-day weekend so then it's just me and antonio on monday to do the other whole tank um but we were we were so we get up there uh, we're, we're smart this time. We're not going to put the freaking two bundle on the ground. We're going to leave it up high so we can work on everything. One of the valves wouldn't shut off. So now I had to shut the whole building off again, oh, all the hot water. To, and I was just like, I can't believe this. Get down there. You know, we don't even have one of these parts. I've, I, I managed to make one out of two. I had, I had two Jeez. broken pieces that I managed to make a one good piece. Right. I, it was... <laughs> I, I just started laughing at that point. Yeah, right. It's yeah. just like, I just, yeah. it's just ridiculous. But my back was getting a lot better right away, which was great. And, you know, by by this, I had a gig on Friday night. I had no problem with the gig. And, you know, I, I wasn't exactly lifting anything up heavy by myself. But I'm, I'm just picturing yeah. you laying on the floor playing bass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was, laying on your back playing. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was it was it was something. It yeah. was something. The February has not been a good start, and, and and I'm doing this this gig in in California, and I haven't been able to practice at all. But the great thing is we had a Zoom call on. I don't remember what day it was. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday, and it was this time it was with the drummer that was going to be playing with us, and we jump on, and he already had this like all the songs, a bunch of songs put into a set list with the tempos next to them all on a spreadsheet. And I'm just like, yes. Wow. I just needed that somebody to step up and like, you know, and so we then, it was great to just have that order. So then we went through all the songs and we we're just like, nope, not going to do this one. No, all right, I'm calling this one. I'm playing guitar and we're figuring out keys. As we're, we spent maybe an hour and a half uh, on a Zoom call and we came up with our set of like roughly 20 songs. I'm like, sweet. Nice. That works. So look, yeah, it was cool. And then I, like I said, I just had this gig on Friday. Now, because because of the the leak, and because of getting sick, I hadn't practiced with the band in like a month. Right. And so my expectations for this gig were 
so low. I was not even, I was actually not even looking forward to the gig. I just did. Oh, yeah, wow. I was like, it's going to be horrible. We are going to be horrible. And it turned out we had a great gig. <laughs> it was actually really <laughs> fun. It sounded good. Even like the guys that forgot stuff. You got to love it when the drummer forgets his stool that he sits on. <laughs> and the guitar player oh, forgot man. his effects pedals, all of them back down Haley. So luckily they, you know, there was a reason to go down there and get them all. So we started late, didn't care, no pressure. Great. A lot of people in town for some skiing. Well, we have this, this weekend event where um, you ever see the, the ski joring? They, they ride behind horses. No. It's like water skiing on skis, but you're behind a horse. Oh no! Oh. And and it's an obstacle course. Oh. So this this has got it's got to be from your neck of the woods. I mean, <laughs> only only people in Could your be. part of the world would come up with this. Yeah, but you know, bas- but basically you're on skis and the, you're you've got a, a a water ski you know handle and you're attached to a horse and the horse has a rider. And the rider runs through an obstacle course, and you're being towed behind this horse running at full speed. Oh wow! While you're on skis, <laughs> and then they also have an event up in up in the mountains where it's a uh, uh, you're you're in the snow, and you've got all the parts to make an outhouse, and it's who can build the outhouse first. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. it. It's just silly stuff. And then wow. uh, there's the um, the uh, the where you um, it. it it's like the uh, what's the the slide you know where you, you at the at the bars where you're sliding the little things down the oh like shuffleboard uh, yeah shuffleboard it's like yeah. the shuffleboard but it's with beers and and so but you're not you're you have to catch you have to wing it and then run down to the end and catch it oh geez. and then guzzle it right and and <laughs> oh, that wow. that yeah and it's a race right so that's one event. And then, of course, everyone's got everyone takes skis and and they stick shot glasses on them, so you can have like six people that shot ski doing shot ski at the same time, and right. it's just a it's just a lot of bad ideas all happening at once. Sure, <laughs> it um, sounds that way. But that makes for a great crowd to play a gig in front of. So. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. So in 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 the end, everything's gotten better. I actually finally started to get caught up at work and getting caught up with stuff and. Um, getting back to stuff that I wanted to do a month ago and yeah, it's, uh, things are kind of coming, getting back to normal. Um, but it's, it's, wow. It's been, it's been a challenge. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sounds like it. Sounds challenge. like it. Yeah. yeah. And the, the hard part is allowing myself to, I guess it's the, my win is just taking things as they come doing the best that I can working within my limitations and, and trying not to get too stressed out or too, or, to, or take anything too personally or that kind of a thing. And, and especially with the, the having, you know, events coming up that I, and that I, that I want to do, you know, it's like, I, I, I want to do a good job playing. I want to, uh, you know, perform and be entertaining and all that. But what's, what seems to be great is I'm surrounded by people that I understand. It's like, Hey, you know, we're, we're throwing things together. Let's just have some fun. Right. And that's kind of gone into work. And the best part is, oh, that Monday that we were going to, you know, dig and hopefully find this leak was the first day with our new general manager. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Which is hilarious. It's like, hey, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, but but that also also worked out great. Like so that first week he he was catching up. And so by the time I was feeling better and, and in there and sat down and we could talk, it's it's, uh, you know, he's kind of getting himself comfortable and. I think that's going to really, he's just going to be a great fit for us. And, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of money going out the door right now at work, which is just shocking. And, and to, to have this level of support from our board members who are actively involved and they understand how much this is going to cost, these things are costing and how much stuff is being done. And, and yet they're so supportive and, and, you know, and thankful and grateful. And I'm grateful for them. I, it's been, uh, you know, to get to get through this, like when we finally got that leak fixed, I just walked up to Omar and gave him a big hug. I was like, I ordinarily <laughs> wouldn't do this, but <laughs> you yeah, know, right. Like, right? like we, it's over. You know, like, yeah, I mean, it's over. <laughs> Credits start rolling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's, it's it's like I feel really good about it, just because when we were talking to our new general manager about it, it's like if if this was our, our previous staff setup or 
previous facility set up, you know, there would have been, people would have had feelings hurt and somebody would have gotten yelled at and just, it would have been negative. Yeah. And we came out of this pretty darn positive and, and feeling pretty good about what we do and, and how we do it. And uh, I think I, I really didn't want you know, there was a. I, I wanted to make sure that our our board and 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 our owners had confidence in our team because, you know, James had been there since the beginning of this place, and there was a lot. There was the reason that he stayed on for as long as he did through all the stuff that happened is because people were afraid of what would happen if he was gone. And you know, if this wasn't putting, you know, putting our, you know, th- this was our test. Yeah. This was our test. If we could get through this, if we could lead, you know, our property and our team through this, then everyone should have utmost confidence and and not worry about the fact that that you know, there was the thing that I'd said forever. It's like this idea that somehow people are replace are irreplaceable. It, I'm sorry, but it's just not true. Yeah. People leave jobs all the time. Yeah. You there's a transition. There's difficult. But nobody, yeah, everybody can be replaced. Everybody, yeah. and yeah. and and it's really bothered me for. I mean, it bothered us for so long that the 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 well being of the property was put ahead of the well being of the people, just because like for some reason they thought, oh well, we can't make it without him. Well, clearly we did. Yeah, <laughs> and we are right. And I feel I am just so. I have just never been more proud of of, you know, working with, with my coworkers and the lessons that, you know, again, is having this opportunity to put the tools that I've been taught to use somewhere, you know, like just with this idea that, that, you know, we can all work together. Nobody has to be, no, you know, our egos can all take a back seat and we can all excel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened. And boy, that feels good because the more and more I hear stories of the of people getting, you know, let go and fired from various organizations because of the behavior that they have. I was like, oh, wow, these there are workplaces around this country that are just flat out toxic. Yeah. And it all comes down to personalities and stuff. So feeling uh, very blessed these days. And yeah. And that paycheck with the overtime was um, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Comes in handy sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like when, when I looked at Omar, I'm like, so how many hours did you, overtime did you have? He's like 15. I'm like, I bet that was really nice. Oh, He's like, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, I'm yeah, glad so. you're in a good place. That's that's really a wonderful place to be. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it really is to just to to get through you know, what, what could, you know, has, has been historically extremely stressful. <laughs> right. Oh, and here's the other thing that also, there has not been one contractor that I have reached out to that didn't make it happen for us. Hmm. Like every single Good. one. Yeah. yeah. Like big time. And th- like th- we needed to get the, this phone put back in. And I finally was like, you know, someone suggested, Hey, why don't you call, you know, so-and-so over at uh, altitude insulation and as soon as I, I was like that's who did this work and as soon as i called him he remembered he said he he's like what happened he's like you dug that i'm like this is the third time we're digging this up and he's like he, was, he had an honest interest and at the end he said hey you know what the weather's good right now i'll see if i can get somebody out there tomorrow and i'm like you guys must be slammed he's like yeah we're busy but and i told him i said i i'm so unbelievably just grateful and impressed with everybody that is that is that didn't have to help us and they've helped us and he's like you know it's it's we're no matter how busy we are this is still a small town and this is a small community yeah and and we still have to act that way even though we're you know we're building the house building that's going on right now is just unbelievable all winter long it's still happening Hmm. and these guys are just you know slammed with work and they come out and do a quick hour for us that's awesome awesome yeah exactly so that that's the other part that's just been been great because that was my biggest fear was just hitting roadblocks like that yeah like sorry we're too busy sorry we're too busy like we're seeing with materials and supplies and things like that sure you know so yeah pretty good 
Yeah, it's weird. Like I, I noticed I was at uh, the store for a few minutes today at Kroger, and it was amazing how they actually now have signs in front of a lot of things that are basically saying, like, due to supply stuff. And um, I saw one that said due to a, a flood somewhere, certain things weren't available. And then another one I looked at said that, you know, due to supply chain stuff, we're, yep. you know, we're short on this or whatever. And it, <clears throat> You know, and I hadn't seen that put out before today. And I've been there. I was just there like last week and they didn't have that stuff out. So they're finally, uh, you know, kind of acknowledging it to people a little more. You yeah, know. we had we had one. Uh, our fire alarm system stopped communicating with the company that, oh. that our monitor. Oh. And I was like, OK, this is a major problem. Yeah. Yeah. And and this happened while the the guy came. We discovered it that 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 the same week that we finally fixed the leak. And uh, they sent one of their guys who I absolutely respect on Friday, but I wasn't there. And so I'm talking to Omar on the phone, and Omar's like, like, well, they have this thing that'll you know, and he, he couldn't describe it to me what it was, and I'm just like, well, if it calls anybody, <laughs> like <laughs> if it calls nine one one get it install it and unfortunately you know it well the the fortunate thing was is our like i said our board president was really involved so this was this was going to be expensive this was three thousand bucks and it's considered temporary oh wow and they they took the they jumped at it just because the i mean the safety of the property is priceless yeah absolutely Right. And and so they just jumped on it. And, and luckily they they were they showed up on Monday to do it. And when I was there and so when he walked in, I said, OK, tell me what you're installing. And when he told me, I'm like, OK, all right. You know, like I understood now and could explain it to everybody. And it's like, yes, there we're still going to get the new one because the so the new the, the kind that we ordinarily have, they haven't been able to get one for four months for another client. And they're not even sure when they're going to get when they're going to get it. Oh, wow. And this could be oh, this wow. could be six months down the line. And at least I was like, once I once he started to describe what this quote unquote temporary one is, I'm like, OK, this is perfect. This is fine. It'll take a little adjustment. I'll let the fire department know things will be a little different. But eventually we'll get the right one. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll cost a couple more thousand dollars, but he's already done some of the work. It's just going to pop right into place and we've got newer stuff. But that was just another one of those like, OK, here's the, you know, bam, wham, wham. We had one thing after another, just more money going out the door, more money going out the door. And like it's it's it. it you know, I'm, I'm glad I, I live in a in our my work situation is with people that have the money. And yeah. understand when needs have to be met. Right. Mm-hmm. And aren't afraid of it. And it's like, OK, thank goodness, because. That's why I never wanted to work at like apartment complexes where everything is just penny pinching. I'm like, nope, yeah. not going to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't blame you on that. <clears throat> yeah, anywho, that was a lot of a lot of mental health in there. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that seems like you've went through some really choppy waters and were able to keep positive uh, through the whole thing, which is huge and not something it you really necessarily is. could have said in your past um, quite as easily. Oh, you know. could you like? I seriously, I would have gone home every night, fatigued, yeah, drank wine, and and just and set myself up for even a worse morning, yeah, and then gone to work the next day. And and me getting sick, like that would have happened a week before I got. Here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and and then and then it wouldn't have just been two days gone. I would have been out for four days because I because I would have been. I mean, I would. When, if I was feeling lousy, I'm like, well, might as well drink. <laughs> like, right, right, right. I mean, that that's the truth. That is the absolute truth. And then uh, over the weekend, somebody reached out to me that's also wanting to not drink anymore, and just like, hey, can I call you? And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, yes, this is why I'm doing this. Yeah, that's awesome. So, how about you guys? Well, I mean, I guess I'll go next. Um. It's been pretty good. I was telling the guys before the show started that I'm trying to remember where I left off in my story here, but um, I, I think uh, I was going to meetings as of last time we talked, right? Yep, you said that. I think so. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool. So that's going very well. Um, the people there are freaking amazing. And um, yeah, there's strength being shown by people that it's honestly like watching an emotional um, ninja warrior. When you watch these people, mm-hmm. it's just they're, the way that they're able to just move and dodge and, you know, and, and weave through different pro- problems, not to say that they don't get hit sometimes and end up with injuries and all the other stuff, just like Ninja Warriors do. But for the most part, just the skills and capabilities are awe-inspiring. And, you know, there's one woman who's dealing with her you know her addiction and she's a newlywed and there's newlywed pressures and then there's some work pressures going on so and she's trying and plus some past history she's working through so it's just like everything all at once and she was overwhelmed and I'm like you are getting up every morning I said you are standing up you are going through the you know doing what you need to do to get the day done I'm like that's pretty darn strong and courageous. He's, I'm like, a lot of people wouldn't bother getting up, but you keep getting up. And it's not how you fall, it's how you get up, is what they've always, you know, I've the saying goes. Um, and that's so true. It really is. It's so super true. And that's kind of was a, a point for me that I really started to to absorb is a living in the moment one moment at a time one day at a time and such forth um but also you know right now I'm pretty low in a lot of places in my life but I'm really in a great place to get up you know sometimes I, I can't say if I've hit bottom or anything like that. I don't think I'm in that place to be able to look back and see that. But I can say that I'm pretty darn low as far as the things stacked up in my life. But I'm feeling really positive, too, which is an odd thing. You know, you would think that I shouldn't feel very good right now because I'm in some rough stuff, but I do because opportunity and choice and and balance are all coming into play. And I feel like I'm swimming downstream again. I'm not fighting the current. I'm not trying to, you know, to battle upwards when I just kind of turn around and I'm set. I'm like, okay, I'm going to coast for a while. I'm just going to float down the river and and I can deal with some rapids and stuff, but I'm going to go the right direction versus fighting yes. everything. You're not, you're, yeah, that's all, yeah, that's the, you just summed it up. It's like you've agreed not to fight everyone and everything right now, and most yeah. importantly yourself. And it's like, it's like you had the choice. You could let go or be dragged. And what'd you do? You just let go. Yeah. And you feel like this is the the scariest thing I could possibly do is let go and just, and just, and, and just roll with it. But if you think about when we are in our addiction or in our, whether it's addiction or, or our, 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 whatever illness, or let's just call it dis-ease. When we're in our dis-ease, what are we doing? We're fighting it. We are, we are, uh, in denial in some way always we are it's management it's all managing you're managing 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 and here you are you're like okay i've got this mound of stuff in front of me but you know what i feel light because i'm not feeling i have to manage yeah and that's the thing and i i've relinquished uh financial control so i don't have to worry about that anymore I don't have to worry I mean I don't have access to much which is fine and it's requiring some adjustments but I'm like I'm kind of cool with this to not have that pressure not to have that responsibility on my shoulders right now that you know people are freeing me up to focus on specifically what I need to focus on which is me and getting me in a healthy stable place um which is great. And work's going really well. 
right now really, really well. Um, there's a, a new position on the horizon that um, I'm being considered for, and which would be amazing. And I'd actually be in supervisory position, which is the first time ever, um, which is scary, but also exciting. Um, whether it comes through or not, I don't know. But we'll see. And just kind of letting it be that way. You know, in the past, I would have like completely freaked out as Brian would attest to. And I'd be like stressed and worrying and practicing and all this other stuff. And I'm like, no, I got this. I get a, a training coming up that 60 plus people were invited to. Plus, it's being recorded for uh, future uh, reference for people coming on board. Again, would I be freaking out? Not, you know, not in my distant past. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'm kind of like, mm, okay. I got this. I did a practice in front of my team. I garnered some feedback. I threw it past both my, my leaders, got some feedback, incorporated all the feedback into it. And I'm like, yeah, there we go. We're good. I just got to sit back, not push it. Just let it roll. Just let it happen. Let it just go right out my system. And, um, and so far, like I said, I've been doing pretty well with it. And then I've started, so to catch everybody up, I'm going to meetings. Um, I do have a wonderful sponsor that's helping me incredibly well. Um, I've got different uh, uh, family support as well as friend support, uh, which has been freaking amazing. And I actually looked at my mom this morning and I said, it does not escape me how fortunate and blessed I am that if I found myself living out of my car tomorrow, I know of at least half a dozen to a dozen beds that would be open to me in a nanosecond with virtually no questions asked. Mm -hmm. And that is mind boggling when you compare it to some other people's positions and stuff where they would have hesitate to have even one. And I'm just, it is something that's overwhelmingly, um, it, it's great, but it's hard to even accept and take in that that many people would think so highly of you when you're in this position um, to to do that to open themselves up and just say, you know what, you're having a rough time. Come on in anyways. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it is. It just is very overwhelming, but um, I'm definitely not going to take it for granted. And I think that's the key is recognizing that and um, accepting that. And then I'm trying to think what else we've got going on. Um, oh, I started a bourbon meetup. So since it's one of my hobbies, um, there's a an or a uh, website and app called meetup.com. And it's basically you post an event and people can sign up to attend or not. So I'm doing that with a friend of mine who's going to co-host with me. And uh, we're going to host events, which are just basically dinners out so with people who have like interests and uh, around bourbon and just enjoy ourselves maybe once or twice a month we'll do that so i'm doing that to kind of keep myself preoccupied i've got my improv group uh, meetings whenever i choose to i can jump on those so looking for healthy replacements for um you know for the for the gambling and everything that i've been going through so Good. so far things are going fairly well um i haven't processed a lot and i know i need to but that'll come in its time so what do you what do you mean by that um i'm still in the surreal not really accepting like the consequences are slowly coming through and unfolding some consequences happened really quickly some consequences are still kind of coming through so yeah, so it's it's the whole process of going through all of that, and my life changes haven't really sunk in yet, if that makes sense. Um, so I have a feeling that's not going to happen for a few months longer here for me to 
actually start processing through some of that too. I see, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like the, it's like you, even just because you know changes are coming is different than when the change is there. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so it's, it's, it's just kind of hurry up and wait. <laughs> type of thing yeah well did, did, hey but you know that's the, the, when you're living in uncertainty that's the place where i'm most uncomfortable <laughs> you know like, oh yeah it is not a comfortable place that i'm sitting in right now but uh by any stretch but i am focusing on being of service that's the other thing that i'm really trying to do is is focus on being on service to others get outside my own head you know, um, really work through that stuff. Uh, I'm starting on step one, um, so of my of my twelve steps. So we'll see how my step one goes. But I do have a book that I need to start working on um, tomorrow. I need to spend the evening with um, and get get some down and dirty with myself and see what where comes up. So emotionally, folks, get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> So with that, I will send it on over to Brian to wrap us up for the first part of the show. All right. Um, you know, we uh, um, finally, they finally had the, the funeral for my mom's uh, boyfriend this past Monday, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I wasn't able to go. And I, I just, I have the hardest time going to funerals since um, my dad died. Like, as soon as I walk into any funeral home, the first thing, it just immediately puts me right back there. And, um, you know, I also knew, like, you know, it was weird because, you know, I was, obviously I'm fighting, I was fighting guilt inside of you know, not being there for my mom. Um, but I also knew, you know, my siblings were going to be there and whatever. So it wasn't like she was going to be, you know, the only person there or something like that. But it, it still, you know, I was torn inside because part of me was saying, hey, this is where you should be. But also knowing kind of my own issues and my own limits and, and whatnot on this. And you know, it, it was interesting because my, um, uh, you know, the, some people didn't understand how I wasn't there. And, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, they, they don't see that, you know, with me living with my mom, you know, the things that we, her and I do for each other all the time you know, that that was one day, one small, you know, well, not small, but, you know, that was one thing. But when everybody else is home afterwards, I'm the one home with her. You know, I'm the one that's helping her, you know, with this grief process on a daily basis. And, you know, it's not like I'm ignoring her or neglecting, you know, it's like I've tried to do what I can do to help. But it still didn't help the guilt I felt, you know, at the same time. Uh, she didn't put any pressure or guilt or anything on me. You know, that was 100% just what I did. And I really didn't care that much what others thought because I, you know, I made the best decision for myself in that moment. And I knew, you know, that I'd be there for her other stuff and, and whatnot. Um but still, it's interesting how sometimes your own boundaries and issues run right up against something else that, you know, you, you have to even take a step back to where a lot of times I'd be like, no, I'm not going to go. And I would just immediately, hey, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this, whatever. And then in this scenario it was one of those where I, I, you know, was like, well, you know, like <laughs> maybe I'll soften my boundary on this one because this is a different situation, but I just, you know, and I waited until the night before and then I finally made the decision on it that I wasn't, I, I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, but, you know, so now at least it feels like, you know, people can kind of move forward because it took like two weeks to have the, 
uh, funeral. He was cremated, but it, you know the actual kind of funeral wasn't for a couple weeks. So a lot of people, I think, were kind of just anxious in the waiting. You know, similar like Jen said, hurry up and wait and just wait and wait and all that. But uh, hopefully everybody can, you know, start kind of moving, you know, not moving on, but moving forward and kind of, uh, you know, getting parts of their life back that maybe they had kind of put on hold, but still also navigate the grieving process, which, you know, takes whatever time that person takes. Uh, But uh, what it did, what it really made me realize was how much, uh, how much I realized that I was like, wow, you know, it's been since December since I was in ther- uh, at therapy. Oh, wow. And I hadn't realized that it had been that long, and it kind of hit me because I was like, when was the last time? Because I actually was thinking about my doctor, my, my primary care doctor had wanted me to have blood work in three months from the point I was there last time. And I was thinking about it, and then I was like, wait, I had therapy the day after that, and that's the last time I was there, and that was back in December. And it was before Christmas. So I was like, man, I got to make a phone call. So I set up both things. I set up, you know, my doctor's appointment so that I could go in for the follow-up because he wanted me back in March. And I was like, well, we're almost at the end of February, so I might as well do that. And then I also made a therapy appointment. Um, so... Yeah, it was because I think as this stuff has been going on for these few weeks, I do what I always do, which is I tend to kind of go into robot mode to help and do what I can do. But I put all of my own stuff on the back burner in the meantime. Um, And now it's kind of all coming, coming home, you know, like I can feel, you know, depression rearing around again and I can feel you know, anxiety hasn't been that, that bad, but depression's really been kind of kicking back up and not just that, but just other stuff that's just really been bugging me. Um, you know, I'm avoiding the phone again. I'm avoiding doing things. I'm, and it's not, that's not all depression. There's, you know, other factors in there. Also, I still haven't talked to my therapist about the results of my ADHD evaluation. That's the last time I was in there. We were going to talk about it, but something else came up. We talked about that instead and ran out of time. So <laughs> so I still, have wow. to, I still have to do that and then see where we go from there and stuff, you know. So that part of my life has essentially been on hold for three months, you know, almost. Or, well, two months, I should say. Going By the time I get back in there, though, it'll be about three months. So that that part where I was like, okay, let's go, let's attack this. I was all like, let's, you know, all that yeah. um, optimism and, and excitement is kind of gone away because, you know, other things obviously have taken over. So I think I'm at a point now where, you know, I got to start kind of look, you know, I got to start making sure my glass is getting, you know, refilled here because I think I've pushed into – you know, a pretty low level myself. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, you know, like I said, it's when that thought really was in my head Friday, I was like, you know, I looked at, I had to get up for something and I was like, you know what? It's two o'clock. And I just, you know, grabbed my phone and, you know, uh, went and called the doctor's office and, and made my appointment so that those were, uh, handled that way. It's done. Um, because I knew if I didn't just basically just do it, the idea of thinking about it was going to grab on and it was going to be another week, (laughs) you know, and it's like, you know, like, dude, it's, it's already been too long. So let's, let's shore this up and, um, you know, um, but I've also noticed, and I think it's like our, our weather has not been helping my case because I've been having migraines like crazy again. And I think it's our our weather has been shifting like, you know, what was it? Just a few days ago, it was 50 degrees. The next day we got what, like three, three or four inches of snow, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, within one day it dropped from, oh God, what did they say it dropped? It dropped like 26 degrees or something like that overnight. You know, it was just, um, 
and then the next day, it, or you know, recently it did it again to where it, we had kind of a drop, or like last night, instead of a drop, it went <laughs> the other way. The wind shifted, yeah. so now our temperature went up about you know fifteen or twenty degrees from last night to or overnight, you know. So my sinus is a bit of mess, and I've just been having, you know, having to use my my uh, the uh, medicine I have for my migraines. Um, but that's kept me, whether I had the migraine or you kind of feel, I forgot what the term for it is, the pre-migraine or whatever. Uh, it's, um, it's as frustrating sometimes because I'll yawn a bunch, my head gets foggy, all this guy. It's like, I just feel like I can't function right. You yeah. know, like if I had a faulty power supply or something, you know, and, and then, the migraine hits and you're just like, Oh geez, you know? <laughs> and then the post is similar to the beginning to where you're still feeling kind of foggy and all that. So, um, I've had a bunch of that. It's interesting though, because of focusing on the other stuff, I really hadn't taken a lot of time to kind of, um, evaluate where I was and how I was doing. And, uh, you know, we talk about all the time on, you know, you can't pour from an, you know, an empty pitcher, cup, whatever term you want to use. Um, and I realized, you know, as as we all do, it's super easy to neglect that. It's very easy. It's amazing how much some of us really have to uh, pay attention to self-care. You know, meanwhile, all I'm thinking about is asking my mom, did you eat today? Did you take your medicine? Are you, the, you know, like going, making sure she's practicing self-care. Meanwhile, I'm not practicing self-care. <laughs> and they're like, dang it, I need someone to check on me. So that, <laughs> but, um, but I didn't realize I wasn't, uh, I wasn't doing that good of a job. I mean, I was taking my medicine. I've been eating that stuff I'm doing, but just making sure that, um, you know, like my doctor's appointments are up to date and that kind of stuff. So, you know, like I said, I realized it's like, okay, let's get this back on track. Let's, let's, uh, reboot. And, you know, <laughs> like I, I slid off the, the road a little bit. Let's get back on the road and, you know, we'll, we'll get back to work here. Um, so yeah. It's, you know, it's po positivity going forward, and it really hasn't been a ton of negativity. I mean, you know, obviously with going through grief process, my own as well as, you know, my mom's, it's, you know, it, it's not a real happy, you know, experience to go through. So, um, but it also hasn't been like overwhelmingly negative because first of all, we, you know, unfortunately we've been through this process too much and, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's not that it doesn't hurt. It's just, there are elements of it that there's no surprise in it. Essentially, there was some surprise in the timeline and stuff, but now that that's kind of worn off, it's, you know, it's more just, yep, this is, you know, my mom and I had to talk the other day and she's, you know, she's like, I just feel so bad that, you know, we get to keep experiencing stuff and he doesn't. And I'm like, yep, that's survivor's guilt. That's, that's a super common part of the grieving process. <laughs> you know, it's just let it come, let it go. You know, like, like you learn in meditation with everything else is, you know, don't hold on to it. You know, as we already talked in here, you know, don't, don't let it drag you around. It's yep. Yep. That's, that's a very valid feeling to have. Okay. You know, <laughs> so yeah, that's <sighs> basically where I've been, you know, we've, gotten things we had some worries we thought were with some you know financial stuff but i think we've found some solutions to to those things and um not let it freak anybody out you know which is nice and not typical so uh <laughs> <laughs> um you know that's good too so it's overall we're you know moving forward and and that's about all you can ask you know, like I said, it's, you know, moving forward is not moving on. And I think as long as you can kind of keep that perspective, you don't feel like you're disrespecting the memory of the person you're grieving, you know, because when you feel like you, if you feel like you're moving on, it feels like you're putting them away. And it's like, no, it's that's it's not about putting the person away, but 
it is about the fact that you you know you are still alive and you have to live and you know and most people that we've loved and grieve you know wouldn't want us to just sit around and mope they would want us to live and all that so yeah so yeah i think that's been <sighs> most of it <laughs> other than having having some uh technical issues with uh the computer that i that turned out to be a uh, user error not actual technical <laughs> issues <laughs> sort of um cuz you know i i had some sound issues last night and realized that it was because i didn't have a couple things seated properly <laughs> and uh once i got those plugged in everything sounded amazing again <laughs> so I'm glad you got that worked out. Yeah. Makes you feel real smart though, you know? It's like, yeah. If it's some there. if it's something over my pay grade, then it's like, mm-hmm. well, you know, I wouldn't know that. But when it's like, hey dummy, you know, it's uh it goes back to the IT crowd. It's like, have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? You know, like, <laughs> right. you know, is everything plugged in like is it plugged in? It, you know, like all those things that tech support oh. guys have to ask. Because ninety nine percent of the time, that's the problem. Is it some dumb little, whatever it is? Are you sure it's powered on? <laughs> you know, like that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, you know, when I've been dealing with computers since I was a little kid, and something like that happens, it makes you feel real smart. <laughs> for sure. But because I like I for those who know, like Jen and I jumped on, and I tried a whole bunch of things to get things working, and then it, Heno messaged us and i was like well can you just jump on for a little bit so i can kind of troubleshoot with you and he no more jumped on i slid in my chair and i looked in the adapter thing like that i had already plugged in one side while talking to jen i thought the other side was already plugged in and when i slid a little bit i saw that there was a gap and as soon as i pushed it in all the way everything was fine (laughs) it was that fast Mm -hmm. like i was like oh man I'm such an idiot, (laughs) especially because I had had some issues earlier in the week. And the solution to that was unplugging it from one spot in the computer and plugging it in somewhere else. That was more something that was sort of above my pay grade because it was something I had never dealt with on a computer before because I've never had a computer with like a fancy graphics card or anything. So I didn't know you plug stuff into that. So but this one was just simply making sure it was plugged in. Not it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't even. I can't even blame it on anything other than I just didn't pay attention. <laughs> so Whoops. much like Hanno said, all you can do in those scenarios is just laugh at it because it's absurd. And you know, in the meantime, you're going crazy, racking your brain, doing everything, checking everything you can check, and then you're like, oh wait, it's not plugged in. <sighs> <laughs> So, well, tonight, um, because I think we have a little extra time tonight, and we can actually get a a subject in. Yeah, we good with that. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, I wanted just to kind of touch on something tonight that was very prominent, and was actually one of the topics of a meeting I attended to this week, which is carry the message, not the person. And, Hannah, you may be familiar with this one a little bit, especially once I start explaining a little bit further what it is. It's basically about how, especially with addiction, but I find it is also the case with a lot of mental health problems, is that we as loved ones want to help them in any way, shape, or form. Or form. And the um, same thing with support groups and support teams. We want to support each other. We want to help each other. And a lot of times that help can be good intentioned, but kind of more harmful than good sometimes. Always good intentioned, um, such as, you know, bailouts and constant availability and forgiveness. And it goes into codependency and all this other good stuff, but we won't go that deep tonight. Uh, The first piece I did want to talk about, though, was when you're carrying the message and you're not carrying the person, you're actually sharing your life with them, not your advice, your life. 
you don't give advice, you listen and you tell them what your experiences have been, how they worked out for you and the decisions that you've made. So you give them the choice to take what you've given them and they can apply it as needed because it comes from a place of not judgment and talking one to another type of a situation, one down to another. It's more of a camaraderie and a way of communicating so that they understand that you're there for them and with them, but you're not going to do the work for them either. Like they can kind of, they, they're on their, they can do their own thing too. So um, that's one of the bigger messages that I took from it. I don't know, Hanel, do you have any thoughts around that one? Well, I'm, I'm trying to kind of see where you're coming at this because uh -huh. I'm, I'm, it is very easy to, to, it kind of, to me, it comes back into uh, principles before personalities. It's about mm -hmm. the, the fundamental message rather than our own personal story. But when you're, when you're trying to convey to somebody your, you know, your experience, strength, and hope, you have to bring it from your own personal experience because that's all, that's the only honest, that's the only truth you know. Mm -hmm. The only truth I know is my experience. I can't make something up for somebody. Yeah. And I think that's a, a thing that that in, in recovery, when we have an opportunity to be of service, sometimes, you know, there's a chance that you can, you can take it to the wrong place and you're no longer carrying the message. You're, you're wanting to be so much of service. You're actually, you're, you're, you're inserting yourself in your rather than, than recovery in mm -hmm. or, or you, you know, and I, I, I see this a lot. I, I I think this happens probably more with mental health issues than it would even with addictions and stuff because twelve step meetings most of us are around other people with our our same problems but you know there's a there's such a range of mental health issue and you know if if one person's trying to help somebody else and all you can bring is your own experience. You know, I can't possibly have the full breadth of experience that yeah. somebody might need. And, and where I'm going with this is this idea of of when trying when you're trying to be of service to others is also be honest about what what you've experienced and what you haven't. Yeah. So you are bringing the message and, and not and not yourself into it. Like, for example, I had a sponsee that that clearly had domestic uh, household issues. And I. I've never experienced that. I've never, I had nothing. Like it was so obvious over, I could hear his partner on the other side of the phone and I'm like, okay, that's abuse. Yeah. Like that is clear cut abuse. And I, I, sh I mean, I know I could offer all sorts of little bits of advice. Sure. I don't have any experience with it. No yeah. direct experience whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. I And so then I'm not carrying a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm making stuff up. Yeah. I found, yeah. I found, cause I just typed in what Jen had said about carrying the message, not the person. And I don't have any, you know, like 12 st uh, step experience, but I kind of was going to approach this the way Henna was just talking, which is from the mental health part, because I think mm -hmm. you're right. There's so many people who essentially inject themselves into things instead of, you know, trying to help. But I let me read this real quick, because I think this kind of sums it up pretty well. This is from a, a new breath dot com. And it's by a guy. Uh, he goes by Kyle the Grateful. That's his uh, like Instagram and everything handle. He says, for quite some time, I needed help. I needed to change my life and the way I was living. I can remember to this day, so many people around me tried to show me the way, but I was never responsive to their help. One day, I finally made the decision to get some help, and these memories came flooding back of what these people said to me and what they did for me. I was too stubborn, arrogant, and proud to realize that they were trying to accomplish with me, or what they were trying to accomplish with me, sorry. They were trying to tell me I didn't have to live like that anymore. They were carrying a message, a message that ultimately saved my life. Everybody has someone like this in their life that they wish could change for the better. 
regardless if you disapprove of this person's lifestyle, you have no actual control over them deciding to make those necessary changes. So does that mean you give up and let this person continuously self-sabotage their own lives? The answer is no, but there's only so much that you can do as a person looking from the outside. You should never stop trying to support people that so desperately need help and require a change in their lives. You just have to remind ourselves that you can't physically make someone want to change. Instead, you can be a leader. You can be an example of how to live a better life. You can constantly carry the message. This message, in whichever form it takes, can provide hope and the promise of freedom that can eventually lead to a better way of life full of happiness, joy, and peace. Ultimately, this decision to change lies in the hands, the mind, and the heart of the person that needs to make a change. Once you truly recognize this, you can free ourselves of any false burdens you may place upon ourselves for not being able to make someone want to transform their lives. You always have to remember that you can't force someone to change or get better. You can only carry the message. You cannot carry the person. Yeah, and that's that's uh, that's so a way better way of putting it is this idea of, of like wanting to save somebody is really what it comes down to, mm -hmm. and that's and that's like my example. Everything inside of me wanted to help this person. I want, I wanted to get them out of this toxic situation. Mm -hmm. But there's no way I can do it without inserting myself into something that I have no idea about. Right. And and the truth is that just like just like with a, any recovery. It starts within that individual and, you know, their bottom or their sick and tired of being sick and tired. Of, it, it's still there. And anything before that is, sure, it's information. But to me, the inspiration is when you show someone living you know, your best life and they go, I want that life too. Yeah. Don't want what I have. And, and, oh, wow, they've, you know, I, I know where they've, they've come from and I'm going, you know, I, Hey, what did you do? Yeah. And mm -hmm. who did you talk to? Yep. You know, who did you get help from? Yeah. Cause and like, to, like I said, with, with my depression, the way it ended up, I ended up finally deciding to get help was I read a blog post from an online comic creator who said that he finally went and got help. But because he was afraid that getting on medicines and stuff like that would change him creatively and all this other stuff. And that was a concern I had, too. And then when he was like, but I'm telling you, it made me better. It allowed me to have that freedom to create again and all this. And I did exactly what you were just saying, Heno, to where I was like, that's what I want. That That's the goal. And it finally was like, okay, well, it didn't stunt him creatively. It didn't change that he was funny. It didn't, you know, these things that I was worried about. And that finally, I saw it. So then I believed that I could be it, you know. Well, the other thing to keep in mind is even if you can't can't relate or you don't have your own personal, like, story to be able to share with someone, um, sometimes it's you bringing that message isn't necessarily your personally bringing the message you sometimes it's you facilitating that message to them so you know sometimes like in that circumstances Hanna, where where you didn't quite have the personal experience um but you might have had a professional contact or somebody that you could cost well, that's 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 what i do it, it, yeah. it that's yeah. the whole thing is to say hey I, but i know so and so has had this kind of you know yeah. has some experience with this you know you should go talk to them it'd be like if 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 somebody wanted to talk to me, you know, and the, the alcoholism and struggle in their relationship because of their alcoholism, like I would immediately refer them to somebody else mm -hmm. who's had that life experience. Yeah. Cause I, I don't, I wouldn't have that experience. And, yeah. and I think it's important because you, you need to be able to everything about the way 12 step program works is is about is about seeing people you can relate to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and if you can't relate to somebody, 
then I mean, this is about one one person helping another. It's not about professional opinions. It's not about you know that's the the, the, the and that has its own place. You know, mm-hmm. there's the but but the fundamental of at least twelve steps and and that sort of uh, recovery it, it is based on the idea of 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 one person just relating to another person, mm-hmm. and and it and really doesn't have anything to do with with you know someone's. You know, the minute somebody walks in with some sort of an education on addiction, that like the, they leave that at the door if they yeah. actually understand what these programs are about. You know, I I know plenty of people that that walk in the rooms and and they they share their experience, strength, and hope purely from their personal experience, and then they also actually have a vocation in that field. Yeah. And but they do it differently in the two different spaces. Yeah, I think that's and why think, a lot of times, like you know, a lot of these like addiction centers or treatment centers and all this kind of stuff in groups, even so many of them uh, hire people who are, you know, recovering addicts themselves, or you know, because they can relate, they can actually mm-hmm. talk from that point. Versus, like, if I go get. Uh, Like you said, if I go get a degree in this, yeah, I can maybe lead the conversation and blah, blah, blah. But I can't sit there and go, I understand or blah, blah. I have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I might be able to relate again, like you and I have related, Heno, where I don't have addiction issues, but you and I have found common ground. Yeah, you find crossover. Yeah. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. aside from that, I can't, I can't, I don't know those cravings of you know, or why, you know, the, the different stuff, like why you're doing that stuff, you know, I can't relate to those things. So I think it definitely helps. Like you said, you know, like if someone has been part of it, you know, so they really understand. Now the one, the, the, the other part of this topic that is very important is, and and you touched on this, Jen, is this idea of, and and it, in some ways it seems heartless, but the idea that we, we can't save everybody. Yeah. And, this is something that I think everybody in some sort of recovery, and it doesn't matter what it is, experiences is they find somebody else, they want to help them, but that person isn't ready yet. Yeah. And, you know, put, setting aside all the codependency angles in there and, you know, lost friendships and, you know, uh, financially trying to help somebody or prop somebody up at, or, or, you know, they steal from you or whatever it is. I think what it really comes down to is to be able to, to disconnect yourself enough that you lose your own path because somebody else couldn't find their own, you know, find a path. And I, and that, that's that part where, you know, like, let's say I have uh, somebody I'm working with and they end up either relapsing or even at the worst case, maybe committing suicide or something like that. Yeah. And you sit there and you say, well, you know, that that potential for guilt is huge. Mm-hmm. But if my reason for being of service is to keep myself sober. Yeah, that sounds selfish that's really what it's about yeah well it's about me trying to keep my you know service is part of my recovery if it helps somebody great but it's no just because i'm willing to be of service to somebody means that i'm going to be helpful sometimes i will sometimes i won't yeah and it's a and, and it's a really harsh thing to say but it's really important especially for somebody that's new and has their first opportunity to go, you know, be of service and work with somebody and try to help them in their addiction or out of their own, you know, whether it's mental illness or, you know, uh, anything like that, that if that person doesn't make it, it's not your fault. Right. Yeah. This, um, I found this, like, you know how, like, a lot of times if you Google certain, something, they'll have, like, little questions with a drop down kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And one of them, you know, says, what are, what are different ways to carry – of carrying the message and it says ways of to be of service in AA or other 12 step rooms, which would be attending meetings regularly, offering your phone number, driving someone to a meeting, take on a service position at your group, take on a service position at your local area or district organization and stay sober. 
because like you were just saying, Heno, your sobriety is your path in this. And like we said before, if you stay sober, somebody else can see you and hopefully, you know, like kind of, and I'm not saying that you have, like you just said, you don't have responsibility in that, but somebody else may go, well, if he, they can do it, I can do it. Or, you know, you never know what's the inspiration for someone in there. And, you know, and it's true. Carrying the message is really literally carrying the message at times, like, you know, taking a position in your group that literally is carrying the message, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's a situation, um, a very unfortunate situation that happened, um, at my, at my work. Um, we deal with grain silos and somebody went into the grain silo and was, moving, yeah, yeah, and no. was moving material in a way that was not recommended. Mm. Well, one thing led to another. He did fall into the silo. Well, the guy that was working with him, he wanted to help him so badly that instead of doing the correct procedure, he bypassed that and ended up falling in with him. Oh, geez. And yeah. it did not have a good ending, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but it it was one of those things that if either one of them at any point would have just stopped for a second and took a step back, I can't say things would be different because who knows. But maybe they would have had a different perspective on some of the choices that they were making and deciding if maybe that there was a better choice in that manner. So when you're reaching and the whole reason I wanted to share that in this particular circumstance is that I really think a lot of when you're trying to help someone by sharing the message, it's being very thoughtful in the in the message that you decide to share with them um being very understanding being very open being very non-judgmental but also being very deliberate i think in the situation i just provided of the grain silo i think if they would have been able to step back and god knows i'm not judging because i have no idea what i would do in that circumstance and it's right. absolutely horrific you know a horrible, horrible situation that happened, but I wonder if maybe um, just taking a step back sometimes, that's what we all kind of need to reassess a situation, regardless of how dramatic and, and dire it may be, just to kind of take a little step back, just say, okay, what's needed here, and how can I best be of service while not sacrificing myself? Yeah, and that's, I think that's Ultimately, the key with that phrase mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the, the key to it is about th there's a message. It is worked. And this is the part where there's a lot of people that are like, oh, well, I, I want to change things. I want to make it shiny and new. It's like, well, no, 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 we have a message. It's worked for this long. And this is how we do it. Mm -hmm. And and if you stick to that. Like you can see what the results will be. You don't know what the results are be if you decide to augment it. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, because there's no research. You know, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So at at the very least, you can you you know what sort of it, you know, like for me, I can sit there and say, okay, this was the message that was presented to me, and this was the result. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I can do is present it to somebody else. Yep. And and it either works or it doesn't. You know, you, you when you were talking about the the. Uh, the professional who has no personal experience with maybe something. Mm -hmm. Hey, there are people that they want the professional that actually has no experience. You know, yeah. they, they want to go see a professional that wasn't a drunk before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to see a professional that has a, a ton of, you know, pieces of paper on the wall behind them and not, and not a single one of them was got up out of an alley. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Th that's why there has to be, there has to be, a, there's, there are, there are many messages and they just need to meet the right people. Yep. And I think the thing is that if you keep yourself out of it, then, then you're not going to get disappointed when, you know, the way that you, what, what not everyone is ready to hear your message. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and it doesn't, it just doesn't land sometimes too, right? Like, it doesn't. If, if sometimes people aren't ready. Well, it, you know, if you come from a different background from somebody, yeah. right? Maybe yeah. you can look and go, well, you know, and, and it's easy enough to do to where you can see your rock bottom as worse than someone else's rock bottom. So you can't yeah. identify with their rock bottom, even though the feelings mm-hmm. you have probably are the same feelings they had. The circumstances will make you not identify, like you were just saying, where sometimes that degree makes the difference. Sometimes it's like, hey, I really identify because I, you understand, you know, and in fairness, I've I, I've talked with people who are suffering with from depression and fighting it. And we bond over this or this, you know, the the things that we're dealing with. But I've also gone into therapy and whether my therapist has depression or not, that's none of my business. They don't, you know, that's not what we're talking about. Um, And if they, they don't tell me what to do, they bring a message to me. They lead me to, or help guide me toward a point where I still have to do the work and I have to make the decision. They don't do those things for me. They don't carry me, or even if they do, they only carry me so far. You know, again, and then, you know, I'm the horse in the proverbial, you know, you can lead a horse to water, basically, <laughs> you know, they're like, there's some water, you can choose to drink it, or you can choose not to, you know, <laughs> and, and I think like same in this, you know, you can't, as we've said so many times in this episode, other ones, you know, you, you cannot force someone to get help if they're not in a place to receive it. If they're not ready to get help, they're not going to listen. They're not going to want to do the work. I mean, they may. You never know, but it's not as likely. You know, I'm sure there's some people who have been ordered by a court to go to rehab and have had success from it. You know, but it's still the idea that, you know, as people without that power, it's, you know, you you can just do your best. And the best is to not go, well, I would do this, you know, because it comes off very, I'm I'm better than you. And a lot of people don't, especially if you're down, you know, you don't, you know, because how many people with depression have, you know, well, if I were you, I would just, and it's like, yeah, well, you're not. And, you know, (laughs) that's the first reaction. Well, you're not me, (laughs) you know, so. (laughs) Right. You kind of go on the defensive about it. Instead of being receptive, you're immediately like, oh, yeah, well. (laughs) Right. And here's the here's the good thing, at least as far as as twelve step programs go, is let's say you are you you are working with somebody and it, and and they relapse or something like that. Here's the great thing you get to you get to ask is like, okay, well, what 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 didn't you do this time? Yeah. You know, like, okay, well, what didn't you do? Okay, well, maybe you should do that. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 even look at how I phrased it. I said maybe you should do that. Yeah. Not you have to do it. Right. I've, I've, I had a, a counselor tell me that I had to, I had to make a sponsee I had do something a certain way. And I said, no, yeah, I don't. I can, I'll offer him a suggestion. Yeah. Now you, as a professional therapist, you can do whatever you think, you know, is, that's the, in, in your, in your world. But my world is, is I can only offer suggestions and I can only share what I did. I'm not going to ask someone to do something that I've never done. Yep. And, and, and that makes it really simple and it makes it very easy when, when we're helping people is if you, if you come up with real kind of clear cut, kind of like a guideline, you know, you're, you're working with someone and, and they just didn't want to do this one particular thing, you know, like whatever it was, they, they, they just, they got to one step and they refused to do some little like ceremony with it. Mm. Well, maybe next time you should do the ceremony. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <No, I don't laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, you got to do something different. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's Yeah. You're right. Because mm-hmm. if you do the same thing, you essentially assume you're going to get similar results. You know? Results. So, yeah. So, yeah. Maybe try yeah. something different. Try something different this time. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the part where I when I when I finally realized that in – in helping others that it, it it's not about me. I mean, yeah. it's just, it has nothing to do with me and, and, and I can't, and I cannot, you know, I cannot save anybody. That is, that is, that's me wanting, you know, to, to, to play higher power. 
Yeah. That's me wanting to control outcomes. Yeah. You know, carrying the message has nothing to do with an outcome. It's just a message. Yeah. Yeah. You know, carrying the message has nothing to do with with somebody's results because that's up to them. Yeah. That's right. Like I said, you know, no matter what, you still have to do all the work in that. I can't do the work for you because if I do all the work for you, what are you going to get out of it? It doesn't, you know, there's just nothing to be gleaned from that really. So it's similar to like in school, if someone does all, you know, writes all your papers and does all your work, you're not really learning anything. You're just getting the grade and moving on. You know, you're, you're not getting any smarter. You're not learning any knowledge or life lessons or any of that stuff. So it's, the same thing here, you know, somebody can't do the work for you. I mean, it'd be awesome if you could go into therapy and the therapist would just be like, all right, you're, you know, you're all fixed, you know, <laughs> like here, I did all the paperwork for you. Just sign here and sign here and you're ready to go. That'd be, a, man, that'd be fantastic, but that's not how it works. No. <laughs> well, good conversation, guys. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that that we were able to have a have a talk about this one cuz it really stuck with me um when it was brought up in one of my my meetings is our our topic to share. Um yeah, it's it was just really it's got me thinking. So, yeah, I, any I, of those little slogans, bring those in, they're great. Yeah. I hate them. I, I hate every say, single one of them and then I loved all of them. Lo- looking <laughs> when I was looking it up, the the uh-huh. ca- carry the message not the person is is the best sounding one. The worst one I saw was apparently it used to be referred to as carry the message, not the mess. And I, (laughs) that's a great one. And it's cute, but I don't like the fact, you know, it's just like, I don't like calling people broken and, you know, it's like, I understand, you know, we all feel like a mess when we're in those things, but I just, I'm like, eh, it just, I, I prefer the carry the message, not the person. person. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like the other reduces the, it's a less, it feels like a less than term. I don't, it just bugs me a little bit, but it is cute. I get it because, you know, message has mess in it. So, (laughs) So. well, folks, we covered a lot of ground tonight and you know, we want to hear from you. So if you can, if you want to, or if you feel the compelling, compelling need to reach out to us, you can reach us at the Crazy Life Podcast com. Having a rough go, sudden, Jen. <laughs> I am having a rough go. All of a sudden, my tongue has decided not to work appropriately. All right, let's try that again. Crazy Life Podcast dot com is our website. website. Yeah, that's it. I know that word. Oh yeah, yeah. The Crazy Life Podcast dot at Outlook dot com <laughs> is our email address. Whew. And if you would like to reach me direct, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Um, the best way would be to our Facebook group, because I'm really trying to take, you know, stay away from a lot of my social media. So um, I do know that if you send a message for me there or through Messenger, through Facebook to the to the group, um, Brian or Heno or myself, one of us will see it and I'll make sure that I get it and I can respond. So, um and with that, Hanno, how can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Hanno. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Hanno Heiter. And if you'd like to check out my other podcast, the Moving the Needle podcast, where we talk about film, some television, sometimes music. We just released our Donner Party, which <laughs> is for Richard Donner, who passed last year. And we reviewed Conspiracy Theory. We did a versus Conspiracy. Conspiracy Theory versus Assassins, and that just got released. It looks like yesterday it went up, and it was fun. That one in the previous episode uh, where we reviewed a foreign film, That Obscure Object of Desire, it, it, these are both where the podcast is actually more fun than the movies. <laughs> 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 and we had, we had, I think we had more fun discussing uh, Conspiracy Theory versus Assassins than we had enjoying than watching them. <laughs> And then on on Tuesday, we're actually going to record a podcast about uh, David. Uh, it's a David Lynch movie called Lost Highway. Oh yeah, I remember and, that movie. Whew, Great yeah. soundtrack. It's a it's a doozy of a movie though. It's a doozy of a movie, but the soundtrack is amazing. It's so and good. The vis- yeah. yeah, the yeah. visuals are amazing. Yes. and I'm 
just not sure what I'm going to say about the rest of it. Oh, so, man. Yeah. yeah. Come check us out on Moving the Needle. That was, I worked in a video store when that one came out, and uh, people were always like, yeah, is this any good? And I'm like, do you like David Lynch? And they're like, well, I haven't seen any of his stuff. And I'm like, oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> like, eh? <laughs> It's hard to recommend his movies because they're very different. You know, they're very, he's got his own thing. Yeah. So he does. He has his own thing. Too. Yeah. But I, the, the standout to me for sure, I, I saw the movie cause you know, we got it copies to watch in advance and I immediately ran out and got the, the soundtrack for it. Cause I, I love, it's like, I believe it's, it's uh, uh Trent Reznor. And I think, uh, I can't remember who else are the, like, People that well, put Trent Reznor is kind of like the overall producer of it, but yeah. there's a compo- another guy that wrote yeah. a lot of music for it. It's it's really and, good. And the composed stuff is fantastic, too. It's not yeah. like I'm just saying, it's oh, really it's is. cool that, you know, Trent Reznor put, you know, uh, Smashing Pumpkins or whoever on it, or not Smashing Pumpkins, you know, Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson's on it and whatever. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, the composed music is really good in it, too. So I, I definitely recommend it, you know, check it out on your... Well, get the album. Don't. I'm not yeah. even going to say a streaming service. Get the album. Don't. Or go on. What is it? Title. I think if you're going to use a streaming service because they pay the best at the moment or so. Or no, Peloton. I think does. <laughs> like. <laughs> what the hell? The last time I saw Peloton was the one who paid the most of the artists huh. for the music, which is weird. <laughs> Title's a good service. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Moving back to our other stuff here, uh, you can find. The show on Twitter at uh, well, I know. Did you say re- you, that you can find your show at, at MTN Pod on Twitter? If not, not if I not can. there, <laughs> um, yeah. you you can find this show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes go up. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. I'm also on Instagram at Stunami. If you want to find me there, uh, my other podcast can be found on Twitter at Salty underscore Language. Um. Or at saltylanguage.com, which has all of our social media stuff, like our TikTok, our YouTube, all this. We just recently put up a a YouTube video where we're trying the new Bud Light hard soda uh, seltzers, uh, which was a lot of fun. And there'll be some other videos of us trying some stuff going up, like keto snacks and the Bat Calzone pizza. Um, so those are those have been fun for us to do. Uh, so. Uh, Go check those out on YouTube. I believe it's Salty Language Pod on YouTube if you want to look for us there. Like I said, at saltylanguage.com, all the links are there. Um, that show's not safe for work, so please be careful with that as well. <laughs> uh, you can find this show on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Um, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. Um, yeah, I think that's all the links. So if you need help, please reach out. There's all sorts of resources out there. I always have a few that are listed in the show notes, like the Suicide Prevention Lifeline, um, the Crisis Text Hotline stuff's on there. I really do need to maybe throw a few others in there for, you know, some other organizations. I just haven't done that. I got I got lazy. So, uh, (laughs) um, but again, you know, if you just search whatever it is that you're looking for, if it is, you know, an addiction issue or you're looking for a 12 step program near you there, you know, just use Google. You can absolutely find a ton of different ways of finding some help. Uh, please check in on your friends, make sure they're doing okay. Um, and if you're, you know, and again, if you're not doing okay, please reach out to somebody. And of course, with all the silliness in the world and things and divides and, blah 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 please be kind to one another um you know and just help out when you can just just do something you know that can make a little difference today here it was crazy windy and i went to the store and people were just leaving carts all over the parking lot and where we parked there was a little cart like right by us that you know was blowing toward a car i grabbed that one while i was putting mine away then i saw another one that was somebody just left in the middle of a spot and it blew right into the pathway of cars. So I went over and grabbed that one real quick and put it away. So, you know, even if it's just something like that, that ends up helping somebody else out in the long run, you know, or 
as I was walking up to the store, I had already gone in. There were no carts. So I told the guy, I was like, hey, there's no carts inside. So if you need a cart and, you know, um, you know, just little stuff like that. It doesn't even have to be anything huge, but just a little thing like that where you could save somebody a trip all the way in to have to come all the way back out, <laughs> you know. So and you feel good for, you know, a couple seconds for helping out. So uh, do that and please be kind to people. Like, please, please just be kind and show empathy to people because there's a lot of suck going on right now. Like there always has been, but you don't have to contribute to it. You know, <laughs> like you, you can choose mm-hmm. to, you can choose to not contribute to it. So, you know, join us in, in the fight against the suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks with that, go out there and have the best minute you possibly can have the best hour you can possibly can and if you feel up to it have the best day you possibly can and if you keep setting that bar keep meeting those goals you'll get to the best week you can possibly can um with that you know one minute one day one one hour whatever it takes to get through the end of the day um go out there enjoy yourselves and don't forget wiggle those toes <laughs>